we are here. I've got Kicker Shaver here with, and I'm Jason. And this is the Talking Nietzsche. Show. And for those of you who don't know, Kicker is, God, I mean, how do we describe you? You're an inventor, a philosopher, musician, geologist. Scientist, really. Like sex us. therapist. Sometimes. <laughs> well, I really have. I mean, what, what, what's on your what's on your business anything. card? Um, Renaissance man has been the most popular word to describe the ism that is kicker. And so it covers. You know, you mentioned a lot of them. So but now I uh, poetry and. So poet. Okay. Uh, so, like, at what point in my life do I need a Renaissance man? Uh, I think we should I didn't aspire think I, to be Renaissance. I didn't think I needed a man in my life, but Renaissance man, yeah. I need it's, that. A Renaissance man is somebody who just really thinks outside of the norm to get out of the mundane and recreate. You know, one of my favorite terms uh, is that the easiest way to win is to cheat. That's the inventor's way, because you're tired of seeing the way things are, so you find the shortcuts. It's also the politician's way. Well, you know. I, I, I like that word too. If I can break everything to pieces, uh, a politician. Poly means Multiple. many, uh, but it also means city, which a city is many people. So, um, and then tick is an, just an uncontrollable spasm. So the politicians are supposed to be taking care of the many problems of the city. That's what they do. I don't think they even try anymore. So, we are going to start out with Elijah Craig. Elijah Craig. Are you going to try some? Not yet. You might pick it up a, a little Not bit later? Not yet. I'm still working up my courage with Snapple. <laughs> Should we find out what the lid says, Jason? Because you know there's always some bit of nugget of wisdom. Every ton of recycled paper saves 17 trees. Now, what does that mean to you? Like, break it down. Well, I am a scientist, too. So, I've actually, one of my inventions is a product that reduces 75% of a current plastic waste. It's called the Zip It. And zip it's something it. that you just, it's a sticker that you put on all the bags that you have that you open. You open the bag with the zipper on there, and then it becomes a Ziploc sticker. It, it, and the bottom part of the Ziploc baggie disappears. It's just the top part that you need. You already have the plastic bag there, right? Works oh, yeah. Cheese and our little <coughs> plastic army. All the so things. you can get rid of like all the air in your cheese and yeah. don't come back to little fuzzies? Well, that and, yeah, you know, on the subject See, of the green. What, what kind of inventions do you have that could help people in their everyday life? Um... Well, I mean, that one's uh, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, zip it. I've got, uh, well, I can show you the gig on the go if I could have my lovely assistant, Tristan, bring me the is gig she around on the go. here? She is somewhere in the building. Can I, <coughs> is there a Tristan in the building? Yes, there is. <laughs> you want me to roll it in? Yes, please. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, the over. gig on the go. And of course, you know, what you had mentioned in that list of things that I do is musician. I did. And uh, you're actually so, off. Your head's probably cut off right now. So, now it's as a musician, <laughs> is this where the frame is? Yeah. As a musician, <laughs> we'll operate from the floor. So, you know, good old standard Taylor guitar case. If you know Taylor guitar, I am a major fan of those things. This is Hippocrates, father of music. You play? I do not. You do not. I see guitars on the wall, I assume. I assume. <laughs> Don't assume. Everyone assumes. It makes things out of you and me. But I can't lie on my own show. You can lie. I believe that you can. <laughs> I believe in you. If you try really hard. I could, but someone could just say, here, hold this guitar and I'll have it. How do you hold it? I'll teach you how to just hold <laughs> it right so they believe you. Because really all you need to do is this. I give a very fast guitar lesson if you if you should be so inclined. So um, the gig on the go, this little uh, thing here, makes this a lot more convenient, so where we can stay in frame. Very and, cool. Uh, sit here and you know. Very cool. 
So the gig on the go <coughs> will also, in its prime, provide, uh, there'll be a set of speakers on here. And uh, when I can get the frequencies figured out, I got, I'm going to figure out a Bluetooth set to where you can go straight from your guitar to your, to to your, amp to your gig on the go, but also a Bluetooth headset with mic so you can sing to the same oh, wow. system. So really, the gig on the go is literally that. Anywhere you go, you've got the entire setup to sit down and perform, even plugins for other instruments, rechargeable battery, um, and uh, a bypass uh, direct current. So we're going to use both Edison and Tesla on this one. I love Tesla. I do too. Edison's yeah. a fraud. You know, I think he was really smart. His name is on everything you pay for power. Yeah. Weight, for, for power. Yeah, because he was a patent officer and he stole everyone's idea that came through. I'm just saying he was smart. If Tesla was smarter, that wouldn't happen to him. Tesla was he an inventor, not, he wasn't a good businessman. He business was a passion man, man. he yes. wasn't a businessman. Yeah. Very much like me, I've been duped a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I can't blame anybody for me, it's my life. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things we teach in my science, called enrichment science, which is the, uh, the enrichment of one's own life by your own understanding. Mm -hmm. When you understand who you are, you can start going and give people who you are instead of asking them who you are. That kind of stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. So now I understand you've got the already perfect foundation. Yes, sir. So explain that a little bit. I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, being someone who suffered from uh, pretty interesting layers of, um, I'm still good for now, of uh, a PTSD um, due to uh, some early on traumas and then. Um, you know, really, adulthood hit me at around 34, if, if we can be so bold as to say. And then when I fell in love with psychology, um, it taught me a lot about why I think and behave the way I did based on what I was taught, as opposed to who I could be based on what I should have been taught. And, uh, and then growing into that mentality of becoming one's own man, it made me more capable of having kind of this map. And I felt, you know, I saw that when I told my stories to others, it, it explained their situation, you know, whatever they were going through, I kind of had something in my pocket. So I went, you know, I was kind of in a similar situation and that's how I felt about it, but this is how I think about it now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the foundation teaches is that you, you should use any pain that's in your past as a lesson because a lesson is valuable. Otherwise, this pain is useless in your life and it's just going to hurt you every time you look at it. But if it's a lesson, you're like, okay, don't do that. Or do something different. Or if it was out of your control, maybe learn how to cut toxic people away from your life who don't belong there because they haven't earned the person that you are. So these are lessons, hard lessons that I learned that I've, uh, I've been able to translate into psychological terminology, but in layman term. So it's a lot easier to understand instead of, you know, trying to go off Freudian and, or, or, you know, straight Hippocrates and explain temperament theory and, and depth of understanding, which is, you know, what this thing does. Uh -huh. um, uh, I learned that, that that breakdown in psychology to explain your own self to yourself made it something I could explain to somebody else and help them understand who they are. And again, back to that, that thing I said where when you know who you are, you know what you're giving. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, especially in relationships, they, they spend their time asking the other person, hey, uh, could you tell me a little bit about who I am? Who do you think I am? And then they condition themselves to be that person. They wind up not liking each other because nobody knows what they want. You know, they have a hard enough time figuring out what they want for themselves, and then they impose that on other people. <clears throat> now, how how would you work with? Um, and I'm not using this in the like sexual term, but like a you were talking about pain and how to kind of reverse it, learn from it, and all that. But it seems like so many people out there are 
sadomasochists. Mm -hmm. and I'm not talking about how they want to be whipped and beat and all that, but they're always bringing on this pain in their life and they're not, they just keep doing it. So how do you work with someone who's like that? What do you say well, to them? Well, it depends on whether they're happy with their lifestyle or not. If, if, you're, if you're content in your lifestyle, you're not likely to change it. Mm -hmm. When somebody finds that that area isn't something that really makes them feel complete as they, they you know, think it might, that's where somebody would normally come to me and say, okay, well, you know, I have this lifestyle and I'm not necessarily comfortable with it. And at that point is when you can start talking to somebody at any point. And, uh, you know, that's really kind of an overall, but I think that person in particular, um, it, it depends on what, what the root of why they do what they do is. And it can be different for every single person. So that's one of the areas where you, it would depend on the individual and why they feel like they behave the way that they do. And then chasing down the roots of why they think the way that they do because if you go back to the root of why you behave the way you, you do, it starts at the way they think. Mm -hmm. And then the way that you think controls the way that you see the world. And, and then the way that you see the world, that's called your perception, that, that, that is in control of the way that you feel about the world. So your body releases endorphins to relate to what you're thinking. So now are you talking about like a, you, you meet with someone, you can see all this in them and when, what, what's the right going questions, on. Yeah. And, and then you, so are you like reprogramming them or like getting the, kind of. more enlightening them? Um, those are both synonymous if you think about it. Reprogramming and enlightenment are both the same thing because if you're going to become enlightened, you're going to see things differently and that changes mm -hmm. your behavior. Normally, you know, uh, especially in religion, when somebody changes the way that they think, their behavior is like, okay, now I behave, behave this way because this religion teaches to behave this way. And, and then they become a part of that lifestyle. So, so that's innate in people. So if you take that same concept and you translate it to any given situation, then you can find that root inside an individual by asking the right questions. And the right questions, you know, it's one of my favorite parts of that movie, uh, I, Robot. And when he mm -hmm. stood there, he said, you have to ask me the right questions if you want to get the answers that you're looking for. And it's, it's such a... A profound statement if you think about it because the root of everything that you've ever learned is because you were curious enough to find out or the world had to beat it into you <laughs> and that's really the, the two ways that people learn is curiosity or lesson uh -huh. so so taking those th concepts and and really drawing out an outline for every individual and of course I can do the uh, I do a, a seminar that's available on my uh, I don't know if it's still on my website, but I know it's on YouTube at the Already Perfect, if you just go Already Perfect on uh, YouTube. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, it all links to the, the overall general lesson of how to get to what you would pursue on your own if you don't have access to me. And so we're still working on putting that presentation together to where it's just a, like a, it's a three, I call it a 360 degree book to where you can double click on anything in science you want to learn. And psychology is one of the bubbles that you can click on to go learn about anything in psychology that you want to know. So, you know, eventually Freud will be there right now. There's Hippocrates and there's a lot of my stuff in there as well. And the way that I translate a lot of the stuff that I've compiled over the mm -hmm. years now of research that I've done to learn all this stuff, to put it together. Now, I know like Freud and Hippocrates and Socrates, I mean, they, they all at some points overlap, but at some points they're complete opposites. Yeah, with, that's the fun part. And, and so are you taking different things and just kind of going with on like your own tangent? Yeah, or of course, of course. It's, it's, it's so you're putting it into a, a, more, of me, if a more modern me. context? Really, that's, that's definitely one thing, but one of the things I like to think that I do is where, where the rest of the world likes to argue, I like to bring things together. There's no reason for Freud and Hippocrates to not both be right. There's no reason for them to argue. There's certain areas where they have conflict, but that's humanity. That's the beauty in, in, in odds, in physics. Small and big, you know, proton and neutron, those opposites that attract so strongly and then repel so strongly as well. Mm -hmm. So 
I completely lost the question in my head as to what you just asked me. What was there a question? I don't know. I no, it was um, conflicting, um, like I guess papers from. Ah, yeah. Well, yeah. The uh, the uh, that paper that I gave you. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the desk. That's okay. I've got another one nearby all the time. Um, it's uh, this is the, this thing that I'm digging in is uh, Tristan. Can we have that paper, please? I've got just the uh, the bad copies. You got the last one, buddy. Oh, so bro. if you'll kind of grab that, what I've done, even visually, is describe every layer of any science that you could pick. So if you want, if you want to look on there or, or think of any science that you would want. You know, you mentioned geology earlier, that's over here. You know, that's geo means earth, right? Mm -hmm. And ology means branch of knowledge. So, so the, the, the branch of knowledge of the earth, I've got a kind of interesting theory on the way that the earth works. I call it the, the record player. We're both music people, right? Yes. So if you imagine that black record, right? And then the further in you go, is it the further in you go? It's the further in yes. you go, the, the, the deeper you get into the song, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think of the earth like that, as we dig deeper in, we can retell the stories that were there of all the generations that lived before us because we left a trail. Mm -hmm. So if you notice on here, the birth to death that goes into the earth, that's the recording of a human story. And one of my favorite things I learned in science when it comes to genealogy was the G-E-N word because I'm also an etymologist. I love the research of words and why they mean what they mean. And G-E-N actually means information. We're storing information on a big old record player, and it keeps spinning, telling the story. And if you spin it backwards, it tells it backwards. And it's been happening for millennia. It's kind of a beautiful thing if you look back. But it also describes if there's such a thing as global warming. Let's look at the top and the bottom both being ice and they're spinning around something hot. That's mm -hmm. why the top and the bottom is still hot, or still still cold, cool. because they haven't made it to that surface. If we spun on that axis, that stuff would be gone quick, right? So, yeah. So if you want to describe global warming, it just means that the Earth used to be further away from the sun and smaller. It keeps getting bigger because stuff keeps happening on it, and uh, 660,000 pounds of space dust lands on the earth every day which is almost a million pounds a day so we're actually adding matter to the planet by a magnetic pull mm -hmm. and getting closer to the sun it's hot <laughs> so if you imagine it used to be an ice cube that's melting and as it gets closer to the sun it has atmosphere develop off of it because it steams that ice cube into atmosphere and then land appears and thus the ocean life became human life such as you know the way things develop if you go back to uh, things like uh, Leviathan if you know what that thing is that big that sub. creature it's another thing that I like to do with this with this science page is to connect everything to where it's 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 not something that that needs to be argued. You know, I have it displayed as the modern direction, but if you think about this, you, we see this as one spot. I want this to be imagined as the entire bubble at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, so just like you know, I describe infinity in the past, in the future, we live in the middle, right? That's that's our linear time in our infinity. This explains déjà vu when we twist that ring of eternity of, of eternity into infinity. It mm -hmm. becomes that loop in time where you have that deja vu moment. And that explains, in my theory, that all time already has happened. We're just like the electron. Mm -hmm. We are. <laughs> Moving forward and backward. Yeah, yeah. So we, we, are, we are the constant. If Very you will. cool. So that's why my uh, tombstone will not have an end date. It will have the infinity symbol after 1977. Yeah. God, you're young. Yeah? You're before 77? Yeah. How much? I don't think. A couple of years. Yeah. I bet you was like, what? Two? Yeah. Is it two? You're hilarious! <laughs> I knew it! He's like, oh God, you're young. I remember back when... Young. 19. When Donna was... And then 
Cindy Lauper, who should I go to? Michael Bolton, no. <laughs> Michael Bolton. <laughs> I would never. Where should I go in that era? We were slinky. No, that's too far. <laughs> you doing all right? No. I brought a. What's well, a cork? You know. Ah, got it. I can always get that open. I'm actually curious to try this one. It's barrel whiskey. Barrel whiskey. It is. I, uh, they don't distill it. Have that word in my latest song, Barrel. So I this should. Is, this is the, this is the one I'm going to try. This, but if I'm going to try it, here's my thing: is you, I know you pour like a. I'll pull a, a very little. No, I need the opposite. If I'm going to do it, I'm going in. Well, this is the one. Is that the one? That that's well. This right. one. Okay. Let me explain Barrel, and you can see if you want to go in with this. Uh -huh. So it's kind of like Jack Daniels, where they just take stuff from all different types of whiskeys and they mix it in but they get this constant flavor and that's what you people go to jack daniels for so with barrel whiskey they have this guy who just goes around to different distilleries and he'll try little samples from each barrel and he finds that one barrel that just kind of deviated left but for a good thing mm -hmm. And he'll go, I want that barrel. And so they'll bottle it as like a bourbon, if it's a bourbon. And they'll bottle it. Uh, that's how they do it. Now, this is their new one. It's called Infinite Barrel um, Project. And the infinite barrel or bottle in whiskey is where you, you're kind of like you never end the batch. down with this. I if I had cool. this one, you just kind of keep mixing it yeah. in. So this, it's eight. I think this one, this is the February 2018, yeah. So this one's eight different whiskeys. So it's got scotch, it's got single malt, multi-grain. Wow. It's got rye, yeah, it's no, got bourbon, and this is cask strength. So it is before they dilute it with water. So this one is... Come on, catch up, man. 60, <laughs> instead of the normal 40% alcohol, this is 60%. Okay. So this one will knock you on your ass. When I decide to go in, if I drink, normally it's a Sailor Jerry situation. And it's a lot of it real quick. So and this one, it's like I'm hoping it's dynamite good. or a rocket or maybe even a Roman candle. Well, this one. If that's not racist. Is it racist to say Roman candle? Well, since Rome fell, I don't think... There's a problem with it anymore. There's no more Romans? I guess there's no uh, more Romans. They're more like Italians. I don't think anyone identifies as a Roman anymore. I guess it makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's like saying, no, I'm, I'm not Turkish. I'm sorry, Tur ancient, uh, ancient uh, civilization. I'm not I Turkish. I for I'm, my rude comment. I'm, I'm Ottoman. If, you don't hear that if anymore. If Roman candle should be something that Rome is not proud of, then I'm sorry for that offensive statement. Oh, this one smells good. <laughs> um, how many people know about the bottom of that cup? <laughs> Is that just a me and you thing? <laughs> Pretty much. Or do they already know that? Because I think that's something the world should know. That's a great bottom of the cup. When you get to the bottom of it, if you watch this man take a sip there. Um, Flips everyone off. He's giving the old Johnny Cash uh, <laughs> salute. <laughs> You're the first one to pick up on it. I like it. It's, it's, I'm, I, I, you know, I like to. That's why I take those it. big swigs. Yeah. Just big, long. You know, I'm gonna drink this slowly. Nope, you're too stupid to get it. <laughs> this is your thing. Though. Music. Okay. What do you know about country music. I know it exists. Yeah. I, I like Johnny Cash. I was a country music singer for a long I, time. I don't. I don't go down that road with yeah. music, but I, I can. You know what? Neil Young had some more country he was songs, Southern and I, rock at best. yeah, and I, 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 I like his like, like Leonard Skinner. They play off his country. Is that not? They're not country. They're they're Southern rock. Hey, okay, but he he you know, would he would play um, the one concert he did at the Grand Ole Opry. He threw a country flair on a lot of his songs. Okay. He kind of retooled them a little bit. I'd say that was, and, and that his, was good. That's as, that's as much as you liked in country? Yes. No Willie, no uh, Waylon. I, no. I can't even get into T-Swift. <laughs> I can't do it. All right. I, I, that's Let too country. Let me stop you there. 
let me stop you there because if you're going to associate those two you've got to go early taylor <laughs> child taylor early young songwriter you know pouring her heart into music dixie chicks they, okay natalie they were, i i they her, got shut down on the bush I, thing but now everybody's like bush was horrible and i, I, I like her okay. solo they, stuff they crucified the dixie oh, chicks for, for bashing on bush when they were in France. So, I mean, people like burning their record. I don't know if you know that, but people yeah. burnt their stuff. We, we actually talked and about now, it on one of the previous shows. now, society's like, Bush, boo! And I'm like, wow. You know, it's funny how people think differently at different times. Where it's like, maybe if they would have said that now in France, they might have been like, all right, buy their stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm curious about well, the way But think. the thing is, I mean, now that everything's kind of gone full circle on Bush, and even, um, I mean, terrorism in general, it's, the Dixie Chicks still haven't really fully recovered. That's I mean, people, true. Yeah, they, look, look at Sinead O'Connor. In 1992, 91, she went on Saturday Night Live, ripped up a picture of the Pope to protest um, Catholic priests abusing children. People paid for a plane ticket for her to leave the country. And, I mean, now we kind of know that she was she way was ahead of the something. curve. Yeah. Yeah. And, but no, no, she never got an apology. No one said, hey, uh, come play my hey, kids for mitzvah or something. You got a minute? Sorry. Yeah. She's still waiting by the phone. I would like phone. to change that plane ticket to anywhere you want. <laughs> I mean, she, I mean, it, it took, what? Forever, 20, yeah, 25 so. years you know, the, for the, the her to be proven are, right, but... Are, are normally prophets when they're dead. Yeah. And then somebody picks up what they wrote, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is it, happening. It, <laughs> I, I, I would, I, I'd say that it's that way for any artist. I mean, look at um, Da Vinci. Uh, look at... Um, I mean, God... It, yeah. I mean, it, any artist, I mean, they, they never saw success. They were paupers. And it wasn't until hundreds of years later that... Yes. Someone goes, oh, this art is pretty good. This is a good painting. That's one of my favorite things about the majority of the prophets of the past that people associate to religion. They were people who associated with, with their wealth being in enlightenment. Mm -hmm. As opposed to things that are made out of dirt, which is everything that you can see with your eyes. You know, it's different layers of earth that was here that we dug up and reshaped into different things so i forgot my point again <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not even drinking and, and see, like, what I don't the hell even drink, man. this is me straight up natural and i i'm like asking questions i got this whole laundry list and uh, yay look I, at I, oh. I got i got answers to your questions i just forget what i'm talking about <laughs> half the time no short-term memory it's because we're having fun you know okay the, the steth stethoscope I like to listen. Okay. I walked right into that. I like that. my jokes right on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not where a stethoscope goes. It's not what it is. This one's even broken. It doesn't even work. It's a true decoration. Mm -hmm. So is it kind of like a, a pacifier to a kid? You just got to wear it? Um, no, it, it, it causes people to ask me questions. And I, fell right. I hate you know, those traps. Just like, what? <clears throat> like I say, you can't plan to walk into the pole or fall in a hole. I'm editing that part out. Don't do we're, it. Just, we're just not going Don't there. Don't let him do it. <laughs> we're moving on. This one's a treat. This is, this, this is not this a beginner audience. whiskey. You think I should go in? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right, we got a thumbs up. And does this still mean... Hang loose. Hang loose. Hang loose. Hang loose. Uh, you were too young for hang loose in the eighties. You're just a don't think just a kitten. So how much do you want? Keep going. This 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 is not a beginner whiskey. That's your thing. This is Well, like I said, when I go in This one is going to bend you over. Drop Whoa. your drop your drawers and I don't want to play this game anymore. And slap you on the I ass. I saw the bathroom in here. I'm terrified of what he just said. <laughs> so the uh, page of wonder has been translated onto the smock of wonder. 
eventually this will be now the guy in the center should i say guy yeah is it, he's is andrew it, andrew G. i was gonna say he's is androgynous. it unisex kind of looks like uh krishna sure sure you could throw that in there actually i was accused of that being a new age symbol which really it represents the pineal gland which is your whenever you close your eyes whatever you're seeing is what you've created in your head Whatever you think you're remembering, you're not remembering what you're remembering. You remember what you remember of it. So it's what if created event in your head? What if when I close my eyes, I see just darkness? Well, then you're imagining darkness, because you can put anything in that darkness you want with your creativity. You can start riding a bicycle right there, and then create the hill that you're riding down. And have but it. It isn't that dangerous if I see myself riding the bicycle? I don't know how to ride a bicycle. Go to the top of that hill, hop on that bicycle. But it doesn't matter in your mind. It's your world that you can create with your imagination. Wherever you go, there you are. That's in physical world. But in the psychological world, one of my favorite things, actually I think the, one, of the, one of the last parts of my book, it says that, you know, crazy people don't care what you think. <laughs> they live in, a, in and of their own minds without your opinion involved, and they are normally perfectly content to do so. Uh -huh. So if we could take a little bit out of that page and put it into our own emotional world, we can actually take more control with our mindset. What I mentioned earlier, your mindset controls your perception, your perception controls your emotion. Uh -huh. So if you think mind, body, and spirit, you know, a, a proton, neutron, electron, earth, water, and light, that's what this symbol represents is those, those three things, father, mother, and child all of those things that synergize. So this, uh, uh, and actually I, I just did a painting with the chakra on this body. I did this part of it with the lungs and the heart, wherever that is, uh, with the lungs and the heart. I see the lungs. Um, oh, okay. I just did a painting of this. Uh, Tristan, can we get a picture of that? Um, of, of just kind of this guy, and it has those layers of the chakra. And if you think about those, those actually in science link to the minerals that associate to the body when it comes to amethyst, which they represent in the purple color up at the brain. And amethyst penetrates through your body six inches with the light that goes through to move molecules in a different way, if you will. So, you know, jade energy is the green. There's, there's different rocks and elements that link the earth to the body, even to the part where the human breaks down into the same elements uh -huh. when you shed off the layer that the dog can follow and you decompose into whatever your body becomes whether it's ash or crushed or minced however you like to go <laughs> so that's really if you even even on here it meant it says the pineal gland there so it really represents the the psychological mind uh -huh. and and re linking how the psychological mind connects to it really on here when it goes to the physiological body. This one describes character, temperament, personality, which are all three different layers of, of how people think and behave. You know, temperament is the root of who you are. Character is what your, your environment develops you into being, and personality is what you show the world. You know, everybody has multiple personalities, if you think about it. You're a different person, you know, at the office than you are at home. Shall we? We're, we're not like throwing away 10 years of, Eddie. we're not throwing away like 10 years of AA chips, are we? No, no, oh. I, I don't have, a, the only problem I have with drinking is that my heart the company. is not a fan of my body. So you're going to keel over here. Well, yeah, but. Great. Bro, come on. This is not an experience you know what? where somebody dies. As long as we got the cameras running, I guess it could be Just okay. Just make sure you're right into the bathroom. With the cameras. I don't have one of those on like there. things they have at like public at places that go clear. Defibrillator. Defibrillator, yes. Defibrillator. That's on here too, buddy. <laughs> it's all here. Yeah. So this Is one. Anything else to take out? I described this one as you're at a reggae concert. The guy, you're smoking a cigar, stinky cigar. It could, it could be. I've had those. A little marijuana. And you accidentally light the guy in front of you, his dreadlock on fire. That smell that sounds... is this whiskey. Uh, now, I've, I've also heard it, you lick the underarm of a walrus. So, I say, you must have an amazing relationship with animals. I love animals. If you can get close enough to a walrus to know what I it's like. I love walruses. Did you say lick? 
the underarm. The armpit. You know how like at, at SeaWorld, they're always going like this arm. with their little flipper? Can you call that flipper? an arm? I don't know. You have to call it flipper pit, bro. Okay. Like, you know what? It's it's you got it's a like a flipper pit. That sounds yeah, you so, pretty much would. It really they should put that on the bottle, bro. Yeah, Lick they might. Flipper pit. But you <laughs> know what? That. It's That's good. That's one of those tongue twisters. Lick flipper pit. Lick flipper pit. I dare <laughs> say, it. lick flipper pit. Lick flipper pit. Uh huh. Do it ten times in a row. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me. Let me. Um, Darth, I'm gonna need a term. Can you give me a term? Okay, it's you hate it when I call it cross faded. What do you call it? Intoxicated. Intoxicated. <laughs> intoxicated. It's intoxicated, okay? Coming soon to a website near you, if I can do a shameless plug, is the Top Puff Anywhere Water Pipe. Water Pipe. Stores like a syringe so it doesn't look like drugs. <laughs> but you're in California. It doesn't matter That's anymore. That's true. It doesn't matter. It didn't matter for me anyway because I have medical reasons to do this for real. My heart is stopping. That's not good. A lot. Well, it depends on your perspective of... Usually infinity. that's not a good thing for anyone. For though. me, it's amazing. It's the best. It's like my golden ticket, bro. Seriously. It's, it's the happiest news I think I've ever gotten was the finite part of life described. You ever heard the, t the song Live Like You Were Dying? Of course you haven't. Because you don't know who. You know you, anything about Tim McGraw. Huh. No, no. Uh, uh, country guy? Yeah, yeah, he's a country guy. So did, did he or release that song once, after... He is anymore. Did he Sorry, release that song after the one with um, his wife pawned his pickup truck and ran over his dog on the way out the door? Hey, if you play that backwards, you get everything back. Yeah, you do. Nothing to complain about. <laughs> See, I know my country. <laughs> You I, do. Actually, I was, I've actually written some of that stuff. I, I was walking through a grocery store and I heard it. And I was like, man, this is the most depressing song. Isn't it great? And then it, he got it all back. And I yep. was like, wow. Well, that's the beauty of country if music. If only life was like Which that. Which really, if you think about it, that's the beauty of music to begin with. Is you could tell whatever story you want. It's like the comic books. There's this just yeah. pure imagination. You do whatever you want to in a song. You know, there's this song. Uh, um, okay, I'm done waiting for you. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I just keep smelling Hold this on, one. We gotta do a salute kind of kind of thing. You gotta toast to something. Are we Italian now? All right. I thought we already salute offended the just Romans. Means to your health. To your health. That's I know, even, but that's it's, even it's in Italian. Okay. It's, it's really it, Spanish. Yeah. Okay, but if Spanish and semantic. Italian are taken from Latin, so yeah, it's gonna well, be so similar. We're gonna get all semantical. I love semantical arguments. Please get into one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about we drink to? Uh, to all of those people who need to know a little bit about self-value, let's let's drink to their health. I will include them for once. Yeah. You guys owe me. Salud. I was a joke. You're not supposed to drink this one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> neat. I feel like I'm talking neat now. Talking neat. I've heard that somewhere before. Talking neat. Talking neat. Talking neat. That means you're not good to have a chaser. <laughs> Never seen a Snapple chaser, especially for a Isla oh, whiskey. Oh. Um. Well. You get that smokiness. We can go ahead and say that I have an immature palate, cause. Okay, but while on candy. Under flipper and, of a walrus or. Dreadlock. Burnt dreadlock. I would say burnt dreadlock. Okay. I can taste the flavor. <laughs> oh, it, it, it doesn't hit you till about right here. Yeah. I and it I'm just lasts right and the, you just keep tasting it for... <laughs> it'll, it'll stay with you for about three days. I feel malted. I don't think it's a malted. I feel like I've been... I, have I been malted? No, well, it is a single malt. Am I like a whopper? <laughs> Milk balls. How is that possible? You get milk from girls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I think we, we kind of like glazed over the music part. We did. We did. We glanced over a little bit, didn't we? And you are going to play a song later, but how did you get into music? 
You know, my mother answers this one um, with the song Lawton, Oklahoma. She's not here, so can you please answer it? When I was three years old, I wrote my first song, and it only needed two words and a melody. And it consisted of Lawton, Oklahoma. Lawton, <laughs> Oklahoma. Lawton, Oklahoma. Now, so just, just that over and over again, and really that just never stopped. Now, how did that just not rushed. become the theme song at like every Oklahoma does Oklahoma have a sports team does Oklahoma have a sports team the thunder the thunder there you go the basketball team. their basketball That's terrifying okay yeah I mean <laughs> how did that not become the, we're gonna cut that little that part out. how did that not become the theme song at every Oklahoma Stadium, thunder game sporting event and Oklahoma, I don't know if you know this, but Oklahoma and Texas have a major sports rivalry right there along the border. When those schools intersect from state to state, there's jokes that go back and forth, and I'm Texan, so I only know those. <laughs> but you wrote a song about Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. So where, where, where is your heart? Um, really, my heart is the world, really, if you want to be. It's infinite. He's a so, Texan. Um, I'm, I'm a Texan for sure. That, like I say, I, that cowboy dirt, that stuff does not wash off, man. I lived that life of ranching cowboy at multiple ranches, one of them being, you know, old rodeo champion Larry Mahan. I'm sure you wouldn't know anything about him, but he is to rodeo. Is he a country and, singer? No, he's a rodeo champion. Close enough. Uh, yeah, pretty close, pretty close. So uh, I worked on his ranch, actually, as a kid for a little bit, and uh he taught me the psychology of animals, which basically makes you able to train animals, which is something that I'm very proud of being able to do quite proficiently, even honoring cats. No one can train a cat. Shocking. Cats are just assholes. You got to You got to accept it. Cats you know, are assholes. I, I've had, you know. And that's why we and, love them. I've been, uh, you know, around an alligator. I've been around. Uh, have, have you trained an alligator? Coons. I wouldn't say trained, but definitely caused to bite someone. But wouldn't he bite someone, whether you're training him to no, do that or not? No, because really, we conditioned where the bite happened, if you will. But it was a very young alligator. It was very easy at that point. So you're training an alligator to bite someone. Wouldn't that make you like an asshole? No, no, no. It was the people who got me to do it that are assholes. <laughs> I'm just the, that guy I'm right just the there, trainer. I was just the guy who was like, all right, you know, I work for you. You've signed my paychecks. I'll do what you want. But, you know, the, the game wardens did come. They don't, they don't want you. They, don't, they do not support you having a pet alligator in Southern California. Don't do it. They will come and take it away from you. I'm sure they would. But yeah, I mean, I've been around all kinds of. I mean, I, I can train horses and dogs, and I eventually plan to train a pig. Those are hilarious. I was just going to say, have you ever trained a pig? Well, my grandfather was a pig farmer, and now my brother's a pig farmer, and my phone number I just discovered is 760 EZ1 Pigs. It's a sign. Well, I feel like it is, because really, part of what the already perfect. Enterprises, which is the main leg, the really the the, the, the the foundation of what the Artie Perfect Foundation in its charity, that's the, the philanthropic leg of the Artie Perfect Enterprises, which is the rainbow over <coughs> all the Renaissance things. Mm -hmm. So I uh, had a point a second ago. I was you know what? I, I, I don't think we're really going to get much out of you on music, so... Except Lawton, Oklahoma. Well, I, mean, I can that's... certainly play a song, but let me take a <laughs> breath of this California fresh air real quick. We, we will we will do some music a little bit later. Oh, I thought that's what you were no. implying. 